special presentation of ABC's 2020 focused on the Gilgo Beach murders and the arrest of the suspect Rex Heuerman. It is something, of course, here at Eyewitness News we have followed for the last 10 years since the discovery of those first bodies on Gilgo Beach. Eyewitness News reporters Josh Einiger and Kristen Thorne were there from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And Kristen is part of tonight's two hour special and joining us with more is ABC's Deborah Roberts. Good morning. Good afternoon to you, Deborah. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining us. So yeah. I understand that tonight we're going to hear from family and friends of the victims and maybe some people we haven't heard from before in terms of relatives. Is that right? Absolutely. And yeah. as you said, Kristen is in this piece and she's helped us shed light because you have been following this story. So many people have been captivated by this story for more than a decade and certainly here in the New York area when we first began to hear that it appeared that there might have been multiple women who were missing and then found dead and of course then police began to suspect there was a serial killer. But yet Yes, you will hear tonight, you'll go inside this investigation with us at 2020. You'll hear from the former police chief of Suffolk County about how they stayed on this case. They were, uh, many people began to sort of accuse them of not paying as much attention to this story because the women involved were women who work in the sex industry. But they absolutely push back and say they were dogged on this case. There were a lot of hiccups along the way. But you'll hear tonight about how this case picked up steam over this last year. And of course, with the arrest of architects. Rex Hureman, who police say absolutely floored them. They didn't know exactly who they were looking for, but the suspect that they found, they said they, that they just were really surprised, a businessman with an office in Manhattan. Uh, that was something that really caught them off guard. But also tonight, you're going to hear from family members. These were not just nameless, faceless women. These were mothers. They were daughters. They were people who were still being mourned. You're going to hear from some of those, and you're going to hear from a good friend of one of these victims who I think for the first time is speaking out to us tonight. So we'll take you out there to Long Island. I walked at that area with uh, one of the former police chiefs to talk about how thick that marsh is and why it was so difficult for them to figure out this case and how it just all came to light. And they tell us that this investigation is not over. As you all know, you've mm -hmm. been following the story and it may spawn, uh, it may go across several states now. So there is a lot more to this investigation, even though they do have a suspect in custody as it begins to unfold. And Deborah, it will be fascinating to see it all laid out as, as you guys so artfully always do in the chronological order of, of exactly what happened. And then just hearing from these different family members. I'm curious, though, because we, you know, we've all talked about the, the Rodney Harrison piece when he said the FBI can come in and welcome that assistance mm -hmm. and those eyes to come in because that was such a point of contention from previous leaders in Suffolk County. What struck you hearing from these investigators about how all of this really was broken based on the collective approach? to the investigation after well, so many years yeah th that's exactly right and they make it very clear that it could not have happened without this collective group together yes there were all kinds of you know fits and starts in Suffolk County because we know how you've seen Suffolk mm -hmm. County over the years with all kinds of you know dysfunction sometimes in, in all kinds of offices but they said that they never took their eye off the ball and that they even though some people have said they weren't as focused they were always focused but they just ran into roadblocks along the way but it was really the last year uh, new DNA evidence, cell phone technology, all of those things, breathing new life into this, in this case that sort of brought it all together. And investigators who had been on it for a very long time as well. So it was almost like it all came together over the last year. They began to look at, uh, you know, more of their evidence again and fingered a suspect. And it took them a while to get that DNA from this mm -hmm. suspect. And you'll find out how they did it. A pizza box. You're going to hear about all of that tonight mm -hmm. and how they wound up zeroing in on Rex Heuerman. A yeah. fascinating story and just the beginning, I'm sure. Right. There's still much more to this investigation. Deborah, thank you so much for joining us of today. Course. We're of looking course. forward to it. Thanks, Deborah. 2020 Long Island serial killer airs tonight at 9 o'clock right here on Channel 7.